Hello, welcome back to Math 332 Linear Algebra. In this video, we are going to look at the methods called the least square method. And um, this is going to be the last uh, concept and topics that you're responsible for on uh, this course, which means that the semester is coming to the end and uh, we are all looking forward to the uh, pandemic summer. Okay, so uh, we actually have developed a lot of tools and concepts uh, before this, and such as concepts such as orthogonal projections, uh, orthogonal complements, the fundamental theorem of linear algebra, and all that, so that we can actually put together, uh, put it all together today, and see how it's actually applied to solve a problems. And what is the problems? The problem is the kind of problem that you have seen long time ago, especially if uh, science students uh, and have taken, say, physics or like chemistry in high school. And uh, sometimes in the lab, uh, you have to draw straight lines between uh, all the data points uh, that you collected. So for example, you collected the point one, one, which is right here. You also have another data point, which is two, two, which is right here. And you have another data point, which is three, two, which is right here. And you are supposed to draw a line that passes through all that three points and you know it is not possible. So you kind of like eyeball for a line that kind of like not passes through all the point, but most of some of the points, the amount of the points that's above the line and the amount of points that's below the line are kind of like equal and equally spaced. So you have a vague concept, let's try to find something called the best fit line. Uh, by eyeballing it, uh, that is what you do and what you did in uh, high school. And um, at the university level, I hope you and you do your physics experiments, you didn't do it like that. There's a set of formulas where you will have to uh, compute uh, in order to find the straight line equations, we somehow minimize the errors. So we are going to talk about all that. So that's the problems that we have, and we want to find solutions to that problem, which is finding the best fit line. And uh, since this is a linear algebra problem, so let's going to put everything into a system of equation and uh, write as a matrix form. So what happened here is that you have a straight line equation, y equal to c plus dx, and you want it to pass through 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 2. So these are all the x, y coordinates that you, if after you substitute your x, y coordinate, you get an equation that looks like this, another equation that looks like this, and another equation that looks like this. So I want you to know that the unknown right here is not the x and y, the unknown right here is the c and d. So uh, uh, we are going to write this uh, system of linear equation into this uh, matrix form. And we are going to call this matrix, uh, matrix AX equals to B. So let me get rid of this actual problem that we're going to study. So we're going to write this as matrix AX equals to B. So A here is a 3 by 2 matrix. X here is a 2 by 1 matrix. And here is a 3 by 1 matrix. So here, your X here is C and D. All right. Your B, your B here is uh, obviously your 1, 2, 2. So uh, you should know that if I asked you to solve the system, if you can solve the system, meaning that you can actually find a straight line that passes through all these three points, and we know that's not possible, so which means that this system that we're going to solve is actually not solvable in the sense that they don't have a solution. So this is what we call inconsistent solutions. So we don't have solutions. So this system is actually inconsistent. This system is actually inconsistent. So we know long time ago that the uh, whether or not the system A X equal to B is consistent or inconsistent, it all depends on the column space. So if you have a column space of A, uh, you will see that your B is actually not on the column space of A. It is away from the column space of A. Column space doesn't necessarily have to be a, a plane. This is just a, a graphical representation so that conceptually everything will be easier. So we are going to draw a lot of pictures today and those pictures, most of it is actually uh, to help you to understand that is not, actually not real proof. The real proof is uh, really involved using theorem and so on and so forth. So this is uh, going to be um, uh, the picture is just going to be um, like a cartoon version of what is actually going on. Just for your understanding, it's conceptual and it's actually not real. Okay? So now, so let's do that one more time. So we have this is your column space of A. It represents a column space of A. And your B here is right here. And your B is not on the column space of A. Uh, therefore, the system AX equals to B has no solutions. 
And um, so we want to talk about, uh, since this is what we want to do, is want to find a bit best fits line, best fits in the sense of the uh, error is minimized. So we want to be able to talk about error. So if you take AX equals to B, so if AX equals to B has a solution, if AX equal to B has a solution, so we really can find an X such that AX equals, is really equal to B. If that is the case, if you look at the difference, AX minus B, then it will be the zero vectors, right? Because AX is really B. So if AX equals to B is not possible, um, then if you look at whatever that you have AX, and then you take the difference between AX and B, you will not get uh, a zero vector. You will get some of the vectors that is non-zero, and we call these vectors error vectors. So the error vectors is the difference between AX and B. So if you look at a uh, situation right here, um, so if you look at all the size, and we always analyze the size so that we know what's going on. So you have an error vector that's n by one. So you have like error component e1, e2, all the ways to en. And what we want to do is we want to minimize the error. And we want to minimize the error in the sense that we want to make the, the length of that error vector as small as possible. So uh, this, is, this is normal because like say for example, if I have a vector one, two, three, and I ask you to minimize it, that how do you do that? Like, right? So, okay, maybe not one, two, three. Let's say uh, one, uh, A, B, and I want you to minimize it. So what do you mean minimize it? But if I say it's that find A and B such that the length of these vectors is the smallest possible, then it's possible to do it because um, we can measure length, but we can't really measure vectors, right? So what we want to do is uh, we look at these error vectors and we want to minimize the length of that error vector. So the things we want to minimize is E, right? These error vectors. Uh, but you will know that uh, this is Euclidean distance, uh, which is the usual distance that we know, and it will be something that looks like this. And it is annoying in the sense that they have a square root. So in a lot of cases, we don't minimize the length. We minimize the length square. Okay, uh, the reason why is that if you square the, the distance, you get rid of square root. This is, this is also something that uh, I, I want you to know is that the, the methods that we develop in this videos in this uh, linear algebra method is not the only way to do it. There's a calculus version of it. And uh, you should, that should, the things that we've been talking so far should ring a lot of bell. You kind of seen that before because in count one, you also learn how to optimize something by maximizing it or minimizing it. And when you have like a distance problems, you want to minimize the distance, but you don't minimize the distance uh, because there's a square root. When you take derivative, it's very complicated. So you minimize the distance square instead. So all these things is very, uh, should be something that's very familiar to you. So all these concepts is kind of like not, not really new. So instead of minimizing the length, we're minimizing the length square. And before we proceed and uh, look at this uh, abstract uh, um, notions of all this stuff, I want you to think a little bit that in this situation right here, which is, this is the original problem that we have. In this situation right here, if you look at the difference between AX and B, if AX and B, I look at all these error vectors uh, with the component E1, E2, and so on and so forth, you'll see that the E1 is actually this distance, E2 is actually this distance, E3 is actually this distance, uh, these are the distance between those data point, uh, the vertical distance between the data point and your suppose y equals to c plus dx. So assuming that you have a line y equal to c plus dx, your e1 is actually this vertical distance, your e2 is actually this vertical distance, and your e3 is actually this vertical distance. Okay, so we can't understand what the problem is, okay? So the question is, the question is we want to find a straight line equation that passes through that three points. Uh, if you write in terms of the uh, system of differential equation, you get into this and you realize that this system is not solvable, which means that your B, which is this vector here, is actually away from the column space of A. And how do we, how do we uh, 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 find the best suitable uh, C and D, that C and D is what we want to do here. We want to find these vectors. We want to solve, right? Solve system of equation like that means we want to find the X. So we want to find the value of C and D such that the error is will be minimized. So what is the error? Error is the difference between AX and B. And uh, we want to minimize the error in such a way that the distance or the distance square is, is made as small as possible. Okay. 
So now we're going to pause and uh, forget for a few minutes that the actual problem is what is the actual problem, and look at the uh, the uh, conceptual uh, the conceptual setup for this particular problem here. So before we go further, I just want you to know there's a typo right here. This is not just x, that's ax. Okay, so now we are ready to look at some conceptual setup. So here, if you draw, again, column space of A as a plane and B as a vectors. Okay, so I think you should know by now that AX, okay, is definitely in the column space of A. All right, so this is something that you should know. Any X, okay, so we, we use a lot of X already, so maybe let's use AY or anything. So AY, AX, A, whatever that thing is, that is... Um, uh, the the uh, in column space of A because okay so because for example if you have A and then you have x1 x2 this is the same as x1 multiply the column of the uh, matrix A plus x2 multiply the second column of the matrix A so this is definitely a linear combination of the column vectors so it's definitely an elements of the uh, column space of A so this is something that you should know a long time ago I just want to say it here again because um, this is critical. So, so if I have AX right here, so if I have AX hat, let's say, right here. So AX hat is going to be on CA because it is an uh, uh, element that is in the column space of A. So now if you look at the so-called error, okay, so let me draw that right here. So let's, if you look at the so-called error, the error, the error vectors. So if this is AX, this vector here will be b minus ax, all right, because ax plus b minus ax will equals to b, right? So, okay, let's get rid of this and write that down again carefully. Okay, so this is a column space, all right, so this is ax hat, all right? This is a vector that is in the column space of a, and this is going to be this vector here that is pointing upwards like that. This is going to be b minus ax. All right, so let's take um, let's take another another vector that is in the column space of A. So let's say we take another one that is called just A X. Uh, let's call A X double hat, for example. So this is again uh, in the column space of A. And if you look at this difference right now, this difference, this difference is pointing upwards right here. So this difference right here is a vector B minus A X double hat. Okay. All right. So we have, we have, okay, let me get rid of this. Okay. So this right here is B minus A X hat. All right. And this vector right here is B minus A X double hat. Now, just by eyeballing it, if this is really a plane and this is like a triangle, you can kind of see that this one here, the length is smaller. So if you look at the length, this one actually have a smaller length than this one right here. So if you look at this, this one seems to have a smaller length than this one right here. If you drop it and write it as an ID degrees, you can actually see that, okay, and draw another dotted line right here. You can actually see that this line here is the hypotenuse of this triangle. Okay, so you see there's a triangle right here. So this line here is actually the hypotenuse of a triangle where this is one of a side. So obviously this is one of a side. So obviously this is smaller. I'm not claiming it's 90 degree, but I'm saying that if it is 90 degrees, that's obviously uh, have a, this one here is actually smaller than this. And this is error, right? These are all measurement of error. These are all measurement of error. So um, by choosing, uh, choosing x hat or choosing x double hat so if you choose x hat carefully your ax hat okay compare to what you have done here for ax double hat this error is actually the smallest one this error here is actually smaller right than this one this is actually a bigger error so the least square method is is such a way that we know b minus b equal to ax is no solution that's inconsistent so we want to look for the smallest uh, error in the sense that uh, we want to find okay we want to find x hat so this is the problem right here let me get this right here so the problem is we want to find x hat such that this distance is always the smallest among all the other possible b minus a x that you can think of so whatever x that you can think of let's say for example in the picture i use a x hat hat so whatever x hat 
X hat hat or whatever crap that you can think of, this one right here in terms of error, this is the smallest. So we want to find X hat such that this is the smallest. So this is error. So you want this to be the smallest. Okay, and you can see some of the error is bigger than the, the other error. So right here, this is actually a bigger error. Okay, if you choose X hat hat like that, than this. Okay, now my claim is, okay, my claim is, my claim is that the best solutions in the sense that the error will always be the smallest is that if you choose your X hat, if you choose your X hat as the projection of B on CA. So this is the one that we studied before in a previous video. So I am claiming, okay, I'm claiming that the best X hats that you can think of is, okay, so this is a B, right? So we want, so I'm saying that we want to take A X hat, okay? We want to take A X hat. The best X hat is the one that is A X hat equals to the projections of B onto CA. So in the last video, we know how to write, how to compute the projections of a vector onto a vector space, onto a vector space, not just a vector, but onto a vector space. So last time we have something that is like W, right? And then we have a B, and then we have a formula for this. This is called the projections of B onto W. And the formula will depend on the W having orthogonal basis. So if you have U1, U2 orthogonal, uh, then there's a formula for that. So this is the one that we talked about last time in the previous video. And actually more importantly, uh, that we also learn that this is the projections, but this thing right here on top, which is B minus the projections of B onto W, this actually is in W perp, which means that it is uh, orthogonal to every vector that is from W. So this is the one that we learned from the uh, last videos. Okay, on the concept of orthogonal projections. Look it up if you forgot. So I'm saying, I'm saying that AX hat, X hat should be chosen such that AX hat is equal to the projections of B onto the column space of A, then this AX hat will have the smallest possible error in this sense. Okay, in this sense, in this sense. All right, so how do you prove it? Proof is not complicated. The only thing is that uh, when we try to prove this uh, in, in these notes right here, when you try to prove this, I'm written it um, in a general setting. I'm, I didn't write this as the proof for uh, column space of A. I didn't write this as must be column space of A. I'm just writing this W is a subspace. Uh, so when we apply it, we just change W to C A and you will see it. So let's look at this theorem, for example. This theorem right here, it says that it says that if you have W is a subspace of Rn, you choose a B that is in Rn, then the projection of B onto W is the best approximations to B from W in the sense that the, dif the difference, the error between B and the projection vectors and B and any W that is in the vector space W, uh, this one here uh, will be the smallest, okay? So, so if you, if you want to, you can uh, take W as a column space of A, and you will see that what I'm saying is that B minus the projections of B onto the column space of A, okay, this one right here, okay, will be smaller or equals to, if you want it to be different, this will be strictly uh, smaller than B minus anything that is coming from the CA. Things that's coming from CA will look like this. Okay, and here I choose this to be a x hat. So this will be exactly the same as the one that we said before right here. B minus a x hat, right? B minus a x hat. And then this is B minus a x. Okay, so if you can prove this, we'll get what we want. Okay, so if we can prove this, we'll get what we want. And the proof is not very difficult. What we do is we write the difference between B and W. W is any vector that is in the vector space W. So we want to look at this difference, B, W, which is things that you have right here. And uh, we add one terms and subtract that terms, which is right here. We add a projection terms and subtract the projection term so that they will still be equal. And the reason why we do that is that we know that this is definitely, right, this one right here is definitely in W. 
Uh, why? Because projection of B onto W is obviously on W, and this is a vector on W, so this is W. And this is what we have shown, that B minus the projection of B onto W is in W perp. Okay, so one of it is in W and one of it is in W perp. Uh, if you forgot, remember to check out the uh, video from last time, which I uh, kind of already also mentioned it somewhere here just now. And so by writing it like this, by writing it like this, Okay, B minus W written as something that is in W and something that is in W perp. We explain why this is the case, which means that these two are actually orthogonal to each other. These two vectors here are actually orthogonal to each other. And we, when we compute the different square, the distance square, the distance square, you will actually get this. This is a, a version of Pythagoras theorem in Rn. And uh, this is the key part right here to for you to understand the theorem and um, the computations, why this is true, uh, and where do you actually utilize this, that this vector and this vector are orthogonal is actually given right here. You can take a look, okay? So again, it's computing uh, the, the magnitude square, the distance square of a vector, you just take the dot product uh, with itself and write everything out, distribute, and you will see why this is true. And once we have this, you will immediately see that if your W is not taken as a projection of B onto W, which means you have this term which is strictly positive, then by looking at this, these three terms here, these three terms here, you have this term, none of it can be negative because of the square. And this part right here is strictly positive, is strictly positive, which means that this two here, this will be bigger than this. All right. So uh, if you cannot use negative number, otherwise this is not true. So this one here, so for example, all have to be positive numbers. So let's say this is five, this is three, this has to be two, right? In terms of number. Uh, so this number here uh, has to be smaller. This number here has to be bigger. So you have three terms right here, this terms, this terms, and this term, because this term is not negative, it cannot be zero. Uh, strictly positive. So by comparing these two terms has to add up to this, we know that this has to be true. Therefore, you have this, which means we are almost done. This is a key part. This is basically guarantee. If you see this by changing all your uh, W to CA, you actually see that the projection vector will will guarantee you to have this uh, as your uh, 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 relationship. The relationship between this error and this error will be like that. Okay, so uh, if you if you don't want to look at the, the the actual proof and you want to have just a conceptual understanding of what's going on, you'll be like, this proof is just too much for me. I just want to know what's exactly going on. You can again look at this picture. This picture say exactly the same thing. It says that if you have this as a column space of A, if you choose your AX equals to the projections of B onto W, which your W here is CA, all right, so it's right here. So the error that it produced, okay, will be the smallest because whatever other error that you constructed, this length right here, okay, which is your B minus AX for some other X, doesn't really mean what X. This one here, if you compare with B minus AX hat, well, AX hat is chosen to be the projections of B onto column space of A. If you compare the distance, uh, this 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 distance, this length here is actually going to be the smallest possible, smallest possible compared among all the b minus a x that you can think of, because it is right here and it's kind of like have a ninety degrees right there. You can't really have a ninety. This is just again a conceptual picture. Okay, can't really have a ninety degrees in a vector space that's like strange, very difficult to understand, and then your column space doesn't really have to be like a plane. So this is again just a picture for you to kind of like see why this is true. Okay, so that's enough theory. This is actually um, the place that we use is uh, the orthogonal projections concept uh, to get the, uh, the, to prove that the AX hat, if you choose it to be the projections, orthogonal projection of B onto CA, that will be the best answers for this particular questions right here. Okay, so now, so this is all done. So now we know how to find so we know how to find, how to solve that equation now. So AX, let me write this thing down one more time. AX equal to B, no solutions, okay? No solutions. So we want to find, we want to find 
uh, another uh, solutions a x hat equals to b we want to find this so we want to find x hat so I want to find x hat such that well, a x hat will be equal to b and the solutions the error b minus a x hat okay this error smallest possible smallest possible so story is a x hat equal to b is does not have a solutions so we want to find x hat such that a x hat will be equal to b and also the error which is b minus a x hat will be the smallest possible if you compare to any other b minus a x compared to any b minus a x this number will be bigger than this so this will be the smallest number and since this represent error this will be the smallest possible error okay all right so now we know how to compute a x hat so apparently a x hat okay is projections of b onto c a and we actually know how to compute this from the previous video it's tedious because we have a formula for this but in order to use a formula for this one you have to find a, a, a orthogonal basis for c a and then there's a lot of dot product this and that so it's that's a way to compute it but it's just, it's tedious but now fundamental theorem of uh, linear algebra can come in and help you uh, uh, get rid of this particular problem because we don't really have to compute projection of b minus uh, projection of b onto c a okay so now we wanted to do something slightly clever so that we don't actually have to compute uh, projections so we don't actually have to compute projection of b onto c a okay so how do we do it well okay so what we do is we are going to look at this one right here so we want to look for x hat such that this is true but we don't actually have to compute this so what we do is we take this difference we take b minus a x hat okay well if your x hat a x hat is this so b minus a x hat will be b minus the projections of b onto c a this is easy right x a x hat is this b minus a x hat will be this so now what I want to do is I want to multiply this equation. I want to multiply this equation here, which A transpose. So if I multiply my A transpose to the left and multiply my A transpose to the right, I will have this. Okay, so we have this. All right, now, what's going on here? So what we see is that B minus projection of B onto CA, this is in w perp in ca perp we know that before right in ca perp right so we have it from the uh, previous video that if you project something onto a vector space and then b minus the projection of b onto the same vector space is in w perp so we know that now so look this is critical fundamental theorem of linear algebra says that okay if you have the null space of a transpose okay the null space of a transpose and column space of a they are orthogonal complement of each other they are orthogonal complement of each other this is where the fundamental theorem of linear algebra come into place come into play okay so let's look at these equations equation double star again so this b minus projection of b on the c a is in c a per right it's in c a per and by having this c a per c a per C A perp by fundamental theorem of linear algebra, C A perp is actually the null space of A transpose. So this one right here, so this one right here is actually in C A perp, which is in the null space of A transpose, which means this entire thing here will be zero. Because, because, okay, let me say that one more time. Okay, look at this equation right here, especially B minus projection of B onto C A. This is in C A perp. And C A perp is the null space of A transpose, and you are multiplying this whole thing, which is in the null space of A transpose with A transpose, which means this will give you zero. Okay, which means this whole thing here is zero. Which means A transpose times B minus A X hat is going to be zero. So this will give this equal to zero. Distribute in and move things around, you get that. This is what we know as the normal equations, okay? So this is what we know as the normal equations, which will, if you solve for this, if you solve for this, you will get x hat. That's what we want to find. And um, most of the time, if your A is rank N, A transpose A is actually invertible. So you can either solve from here, or you can look at this matrix and realize that this matrix is invertible. You can also invert that thing across and get x hat.
Okay, so that is a way we compute x hat. All right, so a x hat. Let me let me say that again. You want to find x hat, okay? Uh, but the uh, the x hat has some property. A x hat has to be blah 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 this and that. And we know that this is the projections of b onto c a. And in order to do that, your x hat is actually given by this equation. Your x hat is actually given by this equation. And then now we can compute what x hat is. So this is the end of the development of the theory, okay, of the theory. Now let's back to the original questions. Where is the original questions? The original question is right here. This is original questions where we want to find the best uh, C and D so that this is going to be true. We want to find the best C and D so that this is going to be true. And the way we do it is put it into the matrix system, this and that, and now we can actually compute, okay? So this is a, the this, uh, matrix systems that we obtain. And then uh, x hat will be something like this, which is computed by taking the matrix A transpose times A inverse and times A transpose B. So these are all computational now. These are all computational now. So you compute all this thing. Uh, it should be easy to follow and you get x hats to be this, which means this is the best C and D that can make the line uh, passes through all this point, passes through, passes through in inverted comma, okay, quotation mark, passes through, so that the error is minimized. So this is the so-called best fits line. So best fits line is computed by finding AX hat, finding the X hat in AX hat, okay? And the way to find, to solve it is to solve either this one right here, is to solve the normal equations, which is this one right here, you should solve the normal equations or invert your A transpose A and to solve this equation. Okay, so let me write it down. You can either solve A transpose A, A transpose A x hat equals to A transpose B. Okay, find x hat through here. Find this through here. Or uh, if, only if A transpose A is invertible. If it's not invertible, you can't do that. So or uh, you invert this across and multiply with A transpose B. So you do it like that. You find x hat by going through this system of equation or going through this, okay? And we, uh, uh, back to our original problems, if you go through that process, you get that. And that is our best fits line, okay? That's the C and the D that we, we were looking for. That's the best fits line. Best fit in the sense that it minimizes error. All right, one more, one more example and then we're done. Okay, so this is an example where I said the equation can look highly nonlinear, but uh, they are linear uh, in their variable. So for example, you have equations like this. We want to find the best A and B so that these equations will fit all this data point. Okay, so you have all of this data point, these four data point, one, two, three, four, and we want to find A and B such that this is the best fits quadratic line. Okay, that passes through all these four points. And um, so when you substitute your x and y coordinates into this system, you do not have uh, uh, nonlinear terms. Everything is going to look like this. So if you substitute x and y into these equations, you got linear equations. Okay, you got linear equations. And do not throw this away. Okay, so this still makes sense. This is still represent one of the data, even though it says zero equal to zero. Put it there, still write it down. And then now you are solving, you are trying to find A and B. You try to find A and B such that this is the best system. Now, this system is inconsistent. There's no solution to it. So again, we want to find the best fit solutions, which is given by this. And the best fit solutions is given by all this computation and put it together. And you get this is your best fit solutions, which means this is your best fit uh, quadratic line that can uh, best fit those four data points. So computationally, this is actually pretty straightforward. So computationally, if you look at a homework in terms of computations, computationally, x hat is actually computed like that, as, as simple as that. It's just a theory. The theory is actually, as you can see, it's actually very fun to look at it because uh, the concept of orthogonality came in to play every single point of the discussions. So we have... This picture, we can be make uh, precise by looking through this theorem and all this theorem has element in W and W perp 
uh, this is in W, this is in W perv, and we take the orthogonal, the, we make use of orthogonality to get this very important equation. Uh, and then we know that this is how we realize that the projection, orthogonal projection is our best solution in a sense, blah, blah, blah. And uh, also we utilize, uh, when we want to find a better way to compute X hat, we actually utilize this fundamental theorem of linear algebra. So all the things that we learned came together. The things that we learned is the orthogonal uh, projections and the fundamental theorem of linear algebra all came in together and give us a very easy way to compute the best fit line. And the best fit line formula is given by that if this matrix is invertible. If you realize that that matrix is not invertible, it's a little bit trickier. You actually have to solve that system of equations, uh, which is given here. But in all our problem, our A will have full column rank and everything will be fine. The matrix will be invertible. And this is also a theorem that we learned last time in the previous video that says that if your A has full column rank, your A transpose A will be invertible. And this is uh, how we use it because in most of our application problem, our A do have a full column rank. And uh, so this X hats can be computed this way. And, um, and uh, you can get, you might not be impressed by saying that uh, I can get the same result by doing calculus on the best fit formulas, but this method is beyond calculus. You can see calculus, when you take derivative, you have to take limits and you have like limits X goes to infinity. That, that all limits concept is right there, but here we don't do that. We don't, we don't even need to use limits because, well, we just use the fundamental theorem of linear algebra and everything is, works out pretty nice. So this is pretty beautiful actually. And that will be the end of the course. Um, and um, well, good luck and uh, wish you all the best. Okay, thank you very much.